If we look at 4x plus 3y equals negative 9, I want you to find the slope and the y-intercept so that we can graph this. How would you go about finding the slope for this guy? Move your x over. Move, no, you move your x over. Oh, oh, yes. We want to solve for y, right? Because if I solve this guy for y, then I'm going to be in really good shape. We were doing this on Thursday. This, right, this is standard form. And what we want to do is go from standard form to the slope-intercept form by using the properties that we talked about a long time ago. How do I finish getting y by itself? Divide everything by 3. So what does y equal? Negative 4 thirds x minus 3. So now this is in my slope-intercept form. What is your slope? Negative 4 thirds. This is definitely a case where you do not want to convert this to a mixed number. Please don't tell me the slope is negative 1 and a third. That's just super awkward. What's your y-intercept? Seriously? 0, negative 3. The y-intercept is an ordered pair. The slope is just a number. All right, so what do I use first? Use the y-intercept and plot the y-intercept on the y-axis. So 0, negative 3 is right here. Use my slope. Is my line going to be going up or is my line going down? down. Why do you know it's going to be going down? Negative. negative slope. So let's use that slope and make sure that I get a line that's going down. So what will I do? Down four over three. I'm out of room. I can't go any further. How do I fix this? Go up four to the left three. Up four to the left three. You keep doing this until you run out of room. These guys are kind of spaced a little bit far apart. Let's see if we can identify the midpoint. How would you go about finding the midpoint? Let's look between these two guys. My rise was four, so half of that is two. My run was three. Half of that is one and a half. One and a half. So you find the midpoint right there. So it's two, one and a half. So two, one and a half, two, one and a half, and so on. What do you guys think? Does that all line up well? I can get one more. So down to one and a half right there. Trust me, the more points you have, the easier it is to graph a straight line. See, right now, this is what we're graphing. We're graphing lines, and they're supposed to be straight. Later on this week, we're going to be graphing things that are non-linear, which means their graphs are not straight lines. They're curves or other weird shapes. So what do you guys think? Does that match up? Yep. I know you guys. I mean, somehow, I put up random pictures here that seem random, and you just, oh, it looks the same as the picture you just drew that you just pulled up here. So I like how you trust me blindly. That's, that goes well for you. You're going to make great yes men or women. Don't you agree? No. Well, I'm kind of disappointed in that response. Now, suppose I wanted to find this slope. I want to make sure that what I have here is okay. If I go from this point to, say, this point, what is the ratio of my rise to run? How far down is that? Eight. So I went down eight. What's my run? Six. My run is six, and if you simplify that fraction, what do you get? Negative four-thirds. You get negative four-thirds. Now, something else that we talked about when we were checking these problems to make sure that the graph was right, we would identify ordered pairs and we would plug it back into the original equation. It's really easy, especially when we have something that is in standard form. What are the coordinates for this point? 3, negative 7. That is. We get 3, negative 7. So let's check that guy. If I plug 3 in for x, and I plug negative 7 in for y, 
I end up with 12 minus 21. What does that equal? That equals negative 9. So that point is verified as a solution to my original equation. Uh, what about the coordinates for this guy? What was this guy? Negative 6, 5. Negative 6, 5. So let's plug that in. I've got 4 times negative 6 plus 3 times 5. I get negative 24 plus 15. What does that equal? Negative. Yeah, better equal negative. Better equal negative 9, right? So I picked two points that were not the y-intercept, and I was able to check them against the original equation so I know, you know, without a doubt, that what I have is correct. Do you guys agree with that? Huh? Any questions? And see, this is why I want you to find these order pairs to check against the original equation. Because you may say, you know, I'll just plug it into my graphing calculator. I'll solve for, I will solve for y and plug it into my graphing calculator. But if you've solved this incorrectly, you'll be checking your wrong work against the wrong graph. And it may look right. That's why I always tell you to check against the original <coughs> equation, the equation that has not been tampered with at all. Okay? So even though you solve for y and you can plug that into your graph and calculator, you still need to be able to identify points and check it against the original. That is the difference between a good student and a great student. A great student will make sure that their work always checks out.